find out that the person you met has zero friends and spends all their time alone at home. What is your first thought? There was one guy who came to my shared apartment for students who was from Finland. He was really socially awkward because of his anxiety and barely looked at you in the eyes when you spoke to him. So that is why I took him with me to meet my friends and we started doing cooking Fridays where we all chose a meal to prepare and really do it from scratch. Also great recommendation for a first date for the two of you. That way we started integrating him into our friend's circle and then hours started playing on the guitar and he even began singing after some time. At the beginning we had to be careful with our wording but as he became more acquainted to us, he became cheekier and so did we. It was a great experience for all of us and we learned a lot about people with anxiety and were able to make another person happy. He then had to go back to Finland and we left happily with a hug. My wife and child died few years ago. My best friends from high school and college have died. I don't make new friends anymore. I ride my bike and take care of my dog and keep to myself. Edit. I didn't answer the question at all. My point was just that someone who spends their time alone might not be a bad person. Maybe it's just an easier lifestyle for them. Respect their privacy. My fiancé and children died last year. Had a couple friends die and the rest weren't too fond of me deciding I didn't want to follow their path when I got engaged and cut them off. The parallels you and I share are a bit airy. I used to ride motorcycles, have been considering getting another, and my dog is sometimes a higher priority than myself. He eats well and that matters a lot to me. Aside from that I live in solitude. And 43 more I'm that person. Give them a chance. Some of us have experienced depression or abuse and are this way for a reason. Some of us are trying to have friendships but have spent so much time working and trying to survive that we put social life to the side. Some of us just like being alone. Some of us are looking for someone to help get us out and experience more. We're not bad or broken. We just have become accustomed to solitude and don't know how to live any other way. We don't want your pity but could use some compassion. Edit well this blew up. Thank you for the awards. I'm glad to know I'm not the only loner out there. To those that are struggling you are strong. It takes a strong person to be comfortable with themselves, to take a trip alone, go to a movie or a restaurant by yourself. Most normal people would crack, but not us. Those that long for company, be patient and be strong you've gotta take a step out too. You can't expect others to come to you. You can do it. Hope you all find peace and happiness in this tough world however you choose to live. No no number. This describes me. But let me explain. I work in a very high pressure place with lots of traffic, people and loud music. It's usually fast paced and frantic. The owner hates people standing around. So when I get home I don't want to be around people. I don't want loud anything. I just want peace and quiet and play and spoil my cats. Leave me alone and let me enjoy my 12-14 hours of bliss before I have to jump back to chaos. This is how I feel. I'm a bartender, and that shit drains me. I have to be everyone's friend, therapist, punching bag or eye candy. It leaves me wanting to be alone when I'm not at work, which fucking sucks. Hopefully I find a job that makes me happy someday. The person I am currently dating was exactly like this. I didn't immediately enter into a relationship with him until after we'd met in person and gotten to know each other a bit more. Introduced him to my own friend group so they could help me assess him and it turned out he just wasn't a social person IRL. Nothing wrong with him outside of that. I'm the first girlfriend he's ever had but he's probably the sweetest guy I've ever dated. He can be a little awkward sometimes. He's learning how to juggle different personalities and how to handle sensitive people. It's been a learning curve but he's getting it. It helps that my friend group is extremely patient and supportive. He's become good friends with a few of them and they often game together now without my having to be there. My husband and I fell into this category. He spent all his time playing video games. I spent all my time at home reading and watching TV. We met because we were in the same cohort in grad school. Had we not dragged ourselves to cohort outings because it's what you're supposed to do while in grad school. 
we might not have gotten together. We both enjoy our hobbies far more than we enjoy being out with people. Now, we do those hobbies together, or we give each other the space to do them on our own. We understand the value of alone time, recognize that when one of us needs alone time it isn't an insult to the other person, and we also have so many things we enjoy doing together. Sure, there are the news stories about loners. Then, there are the loners who don't make the news but are still assholes. But there are plenty of loners who just enjoy their own company and their own hobbies. I'm this person. Ten years ago I moved 2,000 miles to be with my wife. I spent ten years being the most dedicated, step, father and husband I could be. Put my wife through school, helped her study into all hours of the night, put my needs on hold to further her career so we would have a comfortable future. Any extra time and money went to providing the best life possible for the children so there wasn't time, money or room for me to pursue hobbies or a social life. Ten years of flying our way up and life started to get a little easier. Debts were paid off, income rose, kids got older and easier to manage. Then it happened. Last year my wife realized she was gay. And that was that. I'm now single and alone 2,000 miles from my friends and family. I have work friends but the vast majority are married with children so that's what their lives revolve around. I'm single with no kids. It's really hard for those two lifestyles to work together. And finding people my age without children is near impossible. It doesn't feel good being this person and makes dating difficult. I dread being asked what are you up to this weekend or any plans for X holiday weekend. In my hometown I had a huge social circle enveloping just about every subculture you can imagine and made of almost every ethnicity. For the first time in my life I have no one to come to, no one to make plans with, no one go out with, and my circumstances are so rare finding someone who can understand is unlikely. I've been in this situation. I befriended someone, let's call her Holly, through a volunteer group and I found out that her 40th birthday was coming up and she had zero plans because she had no friends. I felt bad for her so I went to my group of friends and suggested we plan a girls night around Holly's birthday. One friend said I don't know. I've talked to her a few times and she seems kind of nuts but I persisted. We moved forward. And not only was the girls night a success but Holly became a regular member of the group. Fast forward about 6 months and this 40 year old woman was drunk at my house, hitting on my 23 year old son cyber stalking my married cousin and generally making my life miserable no good deed goes unpunished be careful i met someone like this she was either in her 30s or 50s she lived at home taking care of parents who i began to realize had her in emotional bondage i worked at a comic book store and she was timidly coming in to look at captain america comics she hid them at home. I befriended her as best I could and made sure I was usually working the days she was likely to come in. The dudes I worked with were super nice, really good people, but she was really nervous and I, female, made her most comfortable. The dudes understood. We got her out of her shell a little. She got a pull box for new cap comics and she got into the then starting Winter Soldier storyline really hard. It wasn't a case where there were really any resources to help her. So I just made sure the shop was a brief sanctuary. I had to move out of state eventually. I hope she's still out there, doing better and fanning over the miniseries. I also hope her parents are dead and she inherited a boodle. I really fucking do. Wherever you are, Cap fan, know I'm still worrying about you over a decade later. I have friends. But very few people I actually see and even rarer is the chance to go do anything with friends. I'm home 98% of the time. At first, it wasn't by choice. Then I became accustomed to staying home and it was just easier. I got lazy about my social life, not realizing the importance of actually having one. Now I have a difficult time walking and most of the people in my life don't want to go anywhere with me because I have to take breaks. I'm not debilitated. I have some issues going on with my legs. But those who do stick around to get to know me tell me I'm the least boring person they've ever met. Although that doesn't translate well on here lol. I do have a big ole case of PTSD and have some social anxieties, 
so I don't spend a lot of time in big crowds or events. The COVID lockdown didn't really affect my social life that much. I was the zero-friended person. A guy new at work saw how charismatic, open, social, and funny I was and assumed I had a lot of friends. One night, after we spent some time outside work together, he literally asked me, Is this it? I thought you'd have more friends. When I told him I'm very selective of my friends, and my gregarious work persona was actually a way for people to leave me alone, without them assuming I'm a serial killer or something. I think he assumed I double or triple the size of his social circle. He never wanted to hang out after that. I don't hold anything against him. I think he was desperate for social infrastructure that I couldn't provide. I recently did some consulting work for a lonely person. Specifically, this person is opening a new business and spending a couple million dollars in the process. Everyone around him is looking to get paid, even his girlfriend. I took him fishing one day, to have a serious talk with him. I told him the reason why no one does anything fun like this, that is, fishing, is because everyone is using him for his money. I told him he feels alone because these aren't real friends. He is now alone at home. A new five-bedroom apartment which he plans to use as a content creation house. While he plans the future no one previously believed in. He is happy and asks me relentlessly about going fishing again. TL semicolon doctor. Sometimes it's better to be alone than surrounded by fake friends that make you feel alone. I'm in my 30s and don't have any close friends, most would probably categorize me as a loner. However, between working all day with people at my day job, working nights on multiple side projects, studying other things in between where I can, exercising, and spending time with my wife and kids, I feel completely fulfilled in what I do. Yes, I'm usually always busy with something. But that's what I've chosen and I wouldn't change it. Most people that come out of nowhere, see what I have, and want to be my friend seem to want to disrupt all that. I've attracted a lot of leeches and weird possessive people who want all my time and attention and as a result, I now kind of associate friends with that. Soul sucking. Unfair I know. They're super nice at first, but then become possessive and hostile when I attempt to protect my time and don't have all the time in the world to text constantly and be buddy buddy 24-7. I have all I need in my family and I love it. No, I'm not going to answer your text at 10 p.m. and have a lengthy debate or conversation. Wife time. No I'm not going to get together on a Sunday afternoon with you. Family time. No I'm not going to get together with you during the middle of a weekday just because I work from home and you think that means I do nothing. I have real deadlines, real co-workers, and real bosses. I usually barely have enough time to take care of myself properly, let alone any hobbies I might have to spend time on. I'm sure later in life things might change and I'll have more time for other things as seasons change, but for right now this is where I'm at. I'm this person currently. I had friends up until college. I had to focus on my studies, as I'm the only one in my immediate family that went to college. During college, I realized that I had to get a good job so I could help my parents when they get told. That prevented me from meeting new people during my fresh out of college days. Now I work and work just so I can provide a place for my parents in their winter years because they refuse to send them to a nursing home. I have read many horror stories about nursing homes. Now I just focus on investing, becoming financially free for myself, my future family, maybe, and my parents. I guess I just got lost in my own vision of things that friends didn't matter after high school. I guess it's weird to some people that I don't have friends because they automatically think something must be wrong with me. My current partner has no friends and before meeting him I would have said definite warning sign. But he's a totally amazing guy and I now think it's more a matter of circumstance. Most of my close friends I met in college, and since he didn't go to college he doesn't have that connection. Plus the people he worked with for years were total dicks with no common interests who were always hating on their wives. So not really the type of people you want as friends. Add to that his generally quiet demeanor and anxiety in social situations and the fact that we moved to a new state during a pandemic where he now works from home. 
I can see how that could easily happen to a person. I do think it can be really hard to make friends as an adult, especially when you don't have connections like being parents meeting other parents, or when you work from home and don't leave the house much. It's definitely important to give people a chance, but the second you start getting any creepy vibes, definite red flag. I think it can be a warming sign for sure but shouldn't ever exclude you from forming your own opinion of someone. My girlfriend is basically the person described in this title. I'm her first boyfriend. She doesn't have any friends, and she just likes to stay at home or spend time with her brother and parents. She just doesn't have the energy to go out and be social like I do. It was a big red flag for me at first but I stuck around because otherwise she's really down to earth and fun to be with. We've been together long enough, and have lived together long enough that I realize that there isn't anything wrong with her she, and it isn't that she isn't capable of making friends, she just doesn't feel the need to go and find them. She gets along really well with everybody I know and knows I need to be able to go out with the buds without her tagging along sometimes and she's fine with that. I thought there may be something wrong with her at first but nope. She is really just incredibly content being a solitary person. She's fine with just the few people she has, and she understands my need to socialize and encourages me to do so. She's the total opposite of anyone I've ever dated before and she's pretty damn awesome. My life is just a home version of prison solitary confinement. I live in a very small town and the town gossips voted me out of the community and excommunicated me from the church because before I moved here my family had already sabotaged my arrival. They put me in the situation where I won't find friends so they could be my captors and use me for free labor. And if I complained about anything, because they had me over the barrel. They were just going to have me locked away in a mental institution. Because I have PTSD from the war in Iraq, and because of my military training their story is that I'm a danger to society, which I never have been, but they made sure that lie was permanently marked on my legal record as a tool to keep me enslaved. I think it depends, could be a red flag but I'd want to know their past first. Just like I'd want to meet someone's friends if they had a big circle. Quantity doesn't mean shit. They could be enabling abusive behavior in their friends. They could be pretending to have emotional depth with a lot of people as a coping mechanism. They could have grown into someone more authentic that their old friends recently rejected. Think religious environments. They could have worked on themselves while being alone and just haven't found their crew yet. Edited to say, my source is me. I'm a person who on the outside has many friendships and I don't think it's an honest picture of who I am. I don't have people I can be totally honest with. I'm just outgoing. 3A abusive churches, a fundamentalist religious upbringing, coming out as queer, and a couple deconversions later. Most of my oldest friends have left. I know not everyone is lucky enough to make new friendships and keep starting over. You never know what someone's going through. The person you met might be like me. I'm 65, a gay man who was married to a woman for 37 years. I stayed with her through 13 years of a rare neurological disease, multiple system atrophy, which is degenerative. Progressive and fatal in all cases. She died in October 2019. During the period of her decline we lost many of our old friends, and it was difficult for me to invite people over to our place. I've lost several friends in the last few years from strokes, COVID and heart attacks. I was starting to make new friends when COVID hit. I wasn't raised in Texas and have few friends from childhood or college nearby. I've moved several times due to relocation and have friends scattered across the US, but not here in Houston. I'm curious as to how someone like me is received. That's me. I really only talk to PPL on here. My closest two friends passed away, one in 2018, the other in 2020 just days before my birthday in February, other than those two PPL I don't talk to anyone besides my GF and son. I did have one friend I met on Xbox 360, we kept in touch over the years sort of but he actually got mad at me for not talking to him enough in 2020, but other than that dot 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 not one friend. Don't play anything online either and when I do I only listen to music and turn my mic off. In real life I don't really speak to anyone, neighbors, 
see all workers, nobody really, just on here, I enjoy it though, PPL are too hard to keep up with IMO, I'm not a good friend because I put alone time before friendship and not many PPL I've met seem to understand that, I miss my two friends that passed dearly but in my situation it's impossible to start that kind of bond over again let alone finding someone that I can relate to, I'm not socially awkward or anything I just tend to keep more to myself, just listen and say a few things here and there, never really thought much of it though.